Peace be with you. And a welcome to everyone again to join us today on this sixth Sunday of Easter, Easter season moving along quickly. And we just continue to ask God's forgiveness, his strengthening of us, and his gracing us with the gifts of the Easter season today. And we ask for forgiveness and the Lord have mercy and creed. Mani tu kiti maki nawinan. Mani tu kiti maki nawinan. Sezus kiti maki nawinan. Sezus kiti maki nawinan. Mani tu kiti maki nawinan. Mani tu kiti maki nawinan. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
In our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, we see the early church already celebrating the gift of baptism and the gift of confirmation, that we're cleansed and adopted in baptism, but that confirmation, the activation of the gift of the Holy Spirit to us. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. The crowds with one accord listened eagerly to what was said by Philip. Hearing and seeing the signs that he did for unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed, and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord with joy. Let all the earth cry out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord with joy. Sing to the Lord, all you on earth, sing praise to the grandeur of God. Proclaim his glorious name. Let all the earth cry out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord with joy. Let the whole world worship and sing, acclaiming his wonderful deeds. The might of God is at hand. Let all the earth Cry out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord with joy. Hearken now, all you who trust in the Lord. Our God has done great things for us, answered our prayers with his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet, do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will not longer see me, but you will see me, because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm becoming a little bit frustrated and sick and tired of all these restrictions and what have you. The coronavirus has upset my life and yours. But I'm also very profoundly aware that at some times the most negative points of my life have been those of blessing. It is on these occasions that I have come to understand and to believe that I'm powerless, I'm helpless. I don't know what to do, nor do I know how to do it. And so it seems to me that at this time and place, it's opportunity for me to acknowledge my powerlessness and to seek out a power greater than myself that can restore me to sanity. I'm kind of intrigued in that line of today's gospel. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I guess the word if is kind of raises all sorts of questions. Do I love God? Love speaks about relationships. Am I in a good relationship with God, with Jesus? For many years, I was very much involved with marriage encounter, engaged encounter, marriage preparation. And one of the things that really struck me was, you know, particularly with the, the team couples who would really share the depths of their being in their relationship with one another. And they came to really believe and understand the importance of not just presuming what the other person wants or desires, but we ha actually have to ask them, well, what do I need to do to manifest my love for you? I can have all sorts of ideas of what, what's really needed in here, but is that what, is that what my spouse wants? 
the same thing when I come before God. I can't presume, you know, what does Jesus really want me to do, to change? We need to ask. I remember, you know, we were organizing a marriage encounter right here in the Paw. And for the most part, the women are eager and anxious to get into this. This is about relationship. This is where they come to life. Husbands, not so much. But I remember there was one couple in particular that comes to mind. And uh, the wife really wanted to come on this weekend. Husband, not so much. As a matter of fact, it was absolutely not. And we sicked all the high, high priced, high, high power uh, men who were part of this, you know, to kind of take them on and try to convince them this would be a good thing for you. And uh, he was uncommitted to the very end. The weekend was to start on Friday. Husband comes home at about four o'clock and discovers his suitcase at the door. And, uh, and so they inquire, who's this for? It's for you. Where am I going? Well, either you're going to a marriage encounter or you're going out. It's your choice. He relented, and he came on the weekend. And it was an interesting dynamic. At the beginning, he was there under force. There was no very little freedom. But at the end, we couldn't get rid of him. You know, we're trying to close down and what have you, and he's had such a wonderful experience in all of this. You know, he, he wants to hang around. He dealt with those apprehensions and so on, the fears that was keeping him. You know? And he was able to hear from his wife what it is that he needed to do to manifest his love for her. And the same for her. They tell the story of... Uh, this couple who were having some serious relational problems, and so they went to see a marriage encounter, a marriage encounter, a counselor. And in the course of it, the counselor invited the husband. He says, I want you to tell your wife something that she does that really turns you off. Well, he thought about this for a moment, and he says, every Wednesday, she cooks liver for me. I detest liver. I hate it. To which response his wife says, you hate liver? I thought you liked it. I, would, I hate liver. We shouldn't presume, you know, what the other really wants of us and needs of us. And it seems to me this is what Jesus is manifesting to us. If you love me, you will keep my commandment. I personally don't care for the thing commandment too much. It sounds to me it's a kind of a negative kind of thing. But the meaning of it is not negative. What does Jesus want me to do? What does he want me to change in my life? And so he tells me, I would like you to love. Love God. Love yourself. And love your neighbor. 
And if I can do that, I am manifesting the incredible love I have for God and God for me. And so during these days, it's opportune for us to go and sit with the Lord and discover what it is that I need to do so that I can better love God, love my neighbor, and love myself. Another version of this, of course, is we are invited to become beatitude people. They're beatitudes. That is the manifestation of being someone who is deeply and profoundly in relationship with God. And this is what happens. This is how we live. We reach out and touch the poorest of the poor. In the early church, they used to reflect that there were no poor. The community looked after them. They were beatitude people. Perhaps our, it's our calling today is to kind of see where we've gone wrong and make some alterations so that we are a beatitude people, that we are a people that are really and profoundly loved by God and also become profoundly aware that we too love God. I love Jesus and Jesus loves me and he invites me to go, to go forth and proclaim this love because he wants that love to also be for each one of us without exception. And that's the mandate to proclaim the good news of God. Simply put, you and I are wanted by God. He invites us into his presence and he wants us to know that we are welcome and we are wanted. And so we give thanks to God for this great invitation to love. And now we profess our faith together again uh, as we share this common faith in our Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Knowing our powerlessness, knowing our utter need for God, we bring to him again our prayers of the faithful. For the church, temple of God's living word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who strive to make peace and justice part of every day, life in all nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those amongst us who do not recognize their worth as precious children fashioned in God's image, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for the people of Lalash and Boval and all that area struggling with the COVID virus, uh, for all those struggling with illness, especially the other parts of our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Pray for the people of Cormorant, uh, for Jeremiah who was killed, and uh, for the families of Cormorant. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for your own prayers at this time. We pray. 
pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers we've spoken aloud and those in our hearts. Strengthen us in this Easter graces and bless our relationships. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, salute Ina, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May our pri prayers rise up to you, Kitsamanito, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of old to its fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as, we, as they claim. <laughs> Samanato, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Mary Shadden our Archbishop and all the clergy and the people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray as Father Jim was inviting us in terms of our relationships, especially with our spouses or our immediate close family and friends, to think about what are we not saying or what are we not hearing. And through Jesus' grace, we pray for a deepening of those relationships. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit and let us share Christ's sign of peace with one another.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I now invite you to do a spiritual communion back home. Jesus, the bread of life. who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the true fruits of the Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements again this uh, sixth Sunday of Easter. One is that uh, as much as we're making the best of this situation, spiritual communion and uh, this type of uh, celebration is not the fullness of our faith. So we're longing for the time when we can gather again, share in God's word together, receive Holy Communion. Those days are coming, but we again need some patience uh, as the bishops of Saskatchewan and Manitoba were watching closely the governments allowing some opening of the restrictions and we'll let you know as soon as we can how we too can start to begin to open. 
Your local parishes are struggling, and so if you can support them financially and other ways as best you can, uh, that's really important through this time as well. And our prayers for all the families, all the people who don't have jobs at this time, and that our, our, our prayers are for all families. I just wanted to announce as well that uh, Father Noel Boulanger, who's been working for many years in our archdiocese, will be retiring at the end of August. So he's been serving a lot lately in Grand Rapids, so he'll be retiring at the end of August. I have to admit, I was tempted to sort of tell a little lie this week. I have some time now without traveling all over, so I baked a ham and I brought some ham and cabbage rolls and an apple pie over to one of the families that is sick in town in the pot. So they called back and uh, she, she, I thought she was going to thank me for how great the ham was. Instead, she just kept going on about how good a job I did on the cabbage rolls. And I was tempted to be quiet, but it was James Haymauer that actually made the cabbage rolls, so I did give him some credit. So anyway, we bless you and pray for God's protection and help to be with each of you and a strengthening of your conversations as family. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. Let Tobi is a true. Yadar in his own true visit. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Just a couple of more announcements. One is that again each Wednesday night at 7.30 Manitoba time, 6.30 Saskatchewan time, we pray the rosary live streaming uh, for all of us, all our families and people. Also, it's uh, Pentecost approaching in a couple weeks. And so as Catholics, we often pray novenas. And they're just a special days of prayer and preparation for a great feast. So those who wish, if you wish to join us, we're going to start a novena in the Archdiocese of Kuwait and La Paz this Friday coming up. And each day we'll pray this novena prayer until Pentecost, asking for the fullness of the graces of the Holy Spirit to be with all of us. So if you can check your, the emails or the diocesan website, we'll try to provide the prayers for the novena for the nine days prior to Pentecost. God bless you all.